We are pleased to present from St. Marguerite Bourgeois Parish in Sydney, Mass for Shut-Ins. Well, good day to all of you and welcome to this Feast of Christ the King, Lord of the universe, Lord of the church, and Lord of our lives. On this joyful feast, we welcome today <clears throat> Father Bill Burke and parishioners who belong to the Development and Peace the social justice arm of the church in Canada. We compliment everyone who's involved with social justice. I have to tell you though that next Sunday, we will be telecasting at a different time and a different channel, CTV 2, 10 a.m. But today, we ask Father Bill now to lead us in Mass for Shut-Ins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. We begin our celebration this day, the Feast of Christ the King, acknowledging our sinfulness and placing our trust in God's love and mercy. You came to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time, while Saul was king over us, it was you who led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall be shepherd of my people Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to God's house. Now our feet are standing Within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. For the love of my family and friends, I say peace upon you. For love of the house of the Lord, I will ask for your good. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. 
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, give thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. The Father has rescued us from the power of darkness and transformed us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. Christ is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that we may come to have the first place in everything. For in Christ, all fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, <clears throat> whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The leaders scoffed at Jesus, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked Jesus, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today, you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. It is important for the understanding of this feast of Christ the King to know a bit of its history and its context. It's a relatively modern feast in the liturgical year. It was instituted in 1925 by Pope Pius XI, at a time when the world was in total turmoil. World War I had devastated all of Europe and much of the world, and it was followed by a wave of secularism and a rejection of religious faith by many, many people. It was also a time when toxic nationalism was on the rise. 
particularly in Germany, Spain, and Italy, a process that led to Nazi Germany, fascist Italy, and fascist Spain in the 1930s. Pius XI published his work, Quas Primas, and established this feast as a way of saying, we are not in charge, we are not God. And it is a document very much marked by the theological thinking of the time and the primacy, and, or the primacy rather, of the Catholic Church. It very clearly is an apology, an apo apologized type of work defending the role of the Roman Catholic Church. But at the same time, its fundamental premise is still very valid today. It says, in fact, in a nutshell, our faith is always personal, but it's never private. Our faith is to have an impact in the world and transform society according to the vision of the kingdom of God. That is our mission. And this is a premise that finds full flowering in the encyclical of Pope Francis, Fratelli Tutti. Not always well known and appreciated, Catholic social teaching is a gift meant for the whole world. Pope Francis sees all life, all creation, the whole universe as a gift from God. He calls it a caress from the God of love. This understanding of all coming from God has very serious ramifications for us and our carrying out of Catholic social teaching. We are called to show our respect for God the Creator by our respect and stewardship for the gift of creation. We are called to protect all peoples and the entire planet. And this call is a demand of our faith, not a suggestion. Our society swirls today with controversies about environmentalism and climate change. Pope Francis is very clear and adamant. He says that the ecological issues are a fundamental moral and ethical challenge that cannot and must not be ignored. Our society stresses individualism. Church social teaching, on the other hand, proclaims that every human being has a responsibility towards our brothers and sisters wherever they live. We are one human family, and we are called to live in solidarity with all peoples, and indeed, Pope Francis says, with all creation. The commitment of the gospel is a commitment to the common good. This call, therefore, teaches that economy is meant to serve all people. The marketplace does not take precedence over the values of human beings and workers. Human rights and the dignity of all human beings is not a pipe dream. It is a clear gospel imperative. Our world is often shaped by the divisions between growing prosperity for some and extreme poverty for many. Today, we celebrate on this Feast of Christ the King the work of the Diocesan Council for Development and Peace. Since its founding by the bishops of Canada in 1967, development and peace has worked tires, tirelessly to build this kingdom of God, to incarnate this kingdom in society and in the world, the reign of justice and peace all over the planet. In a world often marred by violence and division, greed and oppression, Development and Peace proclaims the teaching of the Catholic Church that the basic moral test of a society is how the most vulnerable members are faring. Because today we celebrate a king who serves, who loves, and who forgives. We proclaim Jesus as king of the universe, but it is a kingship that is countercultural to so much in our society a king who prefers the company of the poor, the sinner, and the oppressed, not to keep, just keep company with them, 
but to raise them up and to say to them, you too are the children of the King. And finally, to the sick and shut-in as well, in a society that is often not as aware as it should be of their needs, something the recent pandemic has shown us so clearly, the King also says, you too are the beloved children of the kingdom. <clears throat> and so we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so now we present to God the needs of our world and our community. For the church, may we trust in Christ and become one vigorous, fruitful community of faith so that the world may see one King of glory and one kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may they model Jesus' message of mercy, justice, and inclusion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the 55th anniversary celebration of development and peace bring to mind the generous people who continue to support our neighbors in the global south. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our sick and shut-ins and all caregivers know tender love and experience peace and joy each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty, gracious God, you save us through the death and resurrection of your only Son. We make our prayer in his name, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death O Lord until you come again therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Wayne Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy and your people everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a gesture of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. One bread, one body, one cup, one call. Faith, one spirit present in us all. My Jesus, I love you and I long to receive you sacramentally. I embrace your presence within me and I unite myself in gratitude that you are abiding in me and I in you. I pray for the grace to go forth with your spirit of peace and healing to meet the needs of this day. Is not this bread we share, the body of our Lord? Is not this wine we drink, the blood of Christ outpoured? One bread, one body, one cup, one call. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth to build the kingdom of God. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you Will you leave yourself behind if I but call?